So now that we know how, how we can build this uh, lava fire uh, rig height field, let's go and dive into this Coptonet uh, node and see how uh, I actually build uh, uh, the texture. Uh, you will see I use the, uh, pretty much the same techniques as we did for the dusty ones with uh, maybe some, uh, some some other tricks. So first, uh, of course, uh, let me just switch to, to the composite view so we, we can see what we're working uh, with here. So, of course, first I use the SOMP eport node to just uh, and link it to that uh, outfiery uh, null, uh, which is this one uh, here. Uh, so, and I imported everything, uh, basically, I set the uh, planes from SOP uh, and everything uh, from here, as you can see, like I imported uh, all the, uh, the bedrock mess, all the, uh, all the volumes, uh, and then that's my main input node and I drive everything uh, from there. So the height is basement, I dropped uh, a delete uh, node, uh, I like set it to high, but to delete the non-scoped plane, so I, I'm only left with uh, with the height uh, information. I just renamed it to uh, that plane to from height to C, so it works well with the other shaders, and that's my output null out height for the height slash uh, displacement uh, cops. Uh, I also use that height to, to build a mask for the shaders for for the lava. Uh, so what I did, I isolated the uh, the flow, uh, as you can see here, and I also isolated uh, uh, the uh, uh, the water. So those two uh, uh, layers, so flow and and water. Uh, then I renamed them both to uh, from uh, from to to lava, just so uh, uh, you know I can I can mix them uh, uh, together and I use the composite node set to, uh, to minimum actually. Uh, in order to uh, to blend them, so I'm blending this uh, and this to uh, uh, a minimum, and I'm getting uh, this, uh, which uh, is a good start. And I just renamed that to uh, uh, to see to work with the shaders, and that's my uh, final output for the for the for the lava mask. As you can see, the most of the mask is in the actual uh, river banks, but there is some kind of uh, striation from the from the from the erosion flow lines uh, over there as well, and then I, I left all the uh, controls in the in the in the shader, which you will see a bit uh, later. Now, uh, building the color. Uh, first thing uh, first, I took that uh, height and I uh, ran it to a, a WAP uh, cop to, uh, a filter. Same trick as, as before, if you dive into uh, this, you will see I'm uh, binding, uh, uh, like importing the, the height info, I'm running it through uh, RGB uh, color lamp, ramp, and then I'm using a vector to float to connect that to the, to the RGB uh, outputs uh, over here. A uh, simple setup, but uh, very powerful, uh, just so I can set some base color values and then uh, what I did I uh, I used the fantastic labs feature called sample screen colors which you can use to sample colors from any image on your on your screen as you can see the colors I sample here are basically from um, an image which is uh, similar to uh, to something like uh, like this find an lava an image and sample color from it but of course just don't sample uh, lava because I only need the, the values from the colors the stones uh, uh, themselves because lava will be uh, added uh, later uh, okay so next is I uh, I like I did, uh, against uh, isolated the uh, I, I deleted the height uh, because right now I had like two but height and and, and the color because the color was outputted from the cop I just wanted to kind of clean it out so I deleted the the height uh, channel and then I started uh, blending in uh, the specific uh, mask and adding and adding colors. So a bunch of composite nodes. Uh, first node set to uh, subtract and I subtracted uh, 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 kind of slight gray color 0 0.1 uh, using the uh, flow mask so these are my masks here here i have a flow mask that was used uh, as a subtract so uh, i went from this uh, to this adding this black so actually actually subtracting this uh, this gray color after that i uh, actually uh, used some uh, over uh, uh, of the of this uh, kind of black color but for that i used 
the same flow, but I uh, I kind of ramped up the uh, the contrast, actually reduced the contrast a little bit to get this variation of the of the mask, and use this uh, on a composite uh, on uh, on over. Uh, and uh, to to go from like all this darkness to a little bit uh, nicer uh, colors, but still keeping all darkness from the from the from the flow. After that, uh, uh, I can use this this same grain color uh, in the next compositing node, but this time it was again used on uh, on over. Uh, but uh, the uh, mask that I use is actually based from my uh, height uh, information so i use the the height channel and i ran it through an uh, edge detect node uh, set to this uh, mar hildert uh, at five uh, size in, in these uh, settings so this is the mass that you get and i use that uh, in this composite node to kind of overlay a little bit of, um, of that gray color at the foreground weight of 0 0.125 as you can see if, if you go all the way up it, it can get uh, too strong so 0 0.125 was the, was the value that uh, that i used Next, again, adding a little bit of color variation by dropping a color no noise uh, node and then blending that in uh, with another composite node uh, set to uh, subtract uh, this time. I just wanted like some color variation. For that, I use uh, a mask, which is again based on height uh, and then uh, edges but this one i used the sobel uh, technique uh, i inverted it because i wanted the, the invert of that and use the levels to kind of isolate that mask only on on, on peaks and uh, and and slopes and that mask was used to blend in the uh, these color variations uh, to kind of isolate him to not have them all over the uh, the place they're barely visible in the final render, as you as you will see. But I think they add a nice touch. So uh, next thing was adding a little bit of red color uh, to the to the river banks because there is lava floating. So I added uh, this color, as you can see here. Show you the color. So this is, these are the values, and then I composited in the mask for this composite uh, is actually based on the AO mask that we uh, created. So I imported that. And use levels to select only the part of the mask uh, uh, which I actually uh, wanted. And then this red color was uh, blending on top uh, using a multiply uh, uh, method. So we went from this, uh, you can see, and then to this, so just multiplying red uh, where the lava rivers are, uh, are flowing. Uh, then next step was actually kind of just pumping up the edges a little bit again uh, white color uh, on screen uh, blend mode uh, with a specific mask this mask is actually uh, based on the curvature um, uh, which is in this case a uh, mask uh, scope this was the mask that we created uh, on a sub level for the height field i just use levels on it to isolate only the specific parts which I uh, wanted and I uh, added some white colors uh, to accentuate the, the edges of the hot field. So uh, we went from here, as you can see, no white color uh, to this, just kind of adding a little bit of curvature uh, on top. Uh, then uh, we start adding a little bit more darkness details. Just going from this uh, to this, you can see some parts over here. Just a simple black color, uh, which is uh, kind of multiplied at 0 0.445, uh, as you can see here. And the mask for that is, again, uh, driven by that curvature. Uh, but I inverted it first and, and selected uh, the levels. Uh, because right now I wanted the uh, not the edges, but uh, the, the crevices of the of the curvature and just to darken darken it up a little bit so uh whitening the uh the edges uh happen here and then darkening the crevices just a little bit uh, you can you can just kind of play here uh with the, and see how, how it looks uh, when it's a bit uh, a bit stronger but i think that uh, value of 0 0.445 was just enough Final touch was adding those uh, cartography, uh, cartographic looking uh, details, 
uh, in this case, uh, I added them as, as white color uh, in uh, at the 0 0.1 uh, for one for for mask and, uh, and in an add blend mode. Uh, the actual like lines were created the uh, same as uh, as before. Uh, so I uh, took the height, I quantized it to get this height base segmentation, uh, ran through an edge detect to get the actual uh, lines. Then uh, I took the, the grid texture that was scaled uh, to get to a little bit bigger, also ran an edge, an edge detect uh, on that one to get the, uh, the grid. Uh, and then uh, uh, copying it and renaming it to uh, uh, to C. Uh, then I composite those two uh, together uh, to get both the uh, the edges and the uh, and the main grid, uh, as you can see. So that's and then uh, the last part was again starting with a grid texture, uh, tiling it uh, a bunch of times. Uh, Again, copying the channel uh, and renaming it to, to C so it, it works well. And then uh, running it uh, on a composite as actually a multiply operation. So you can see it multiplies over this and, and adds this um, this nice uh, variation in the, in the lines themselves. Let me show you. You can see it looks, it kind of makes it feel like the uh, it's, it's a dotted line. And that, that this, this particular uh, uh, output was used uh, as a mask in this uh, composite node with white color uh, on an add blend mode. And that's it. The, that's the final uh, color for our uh, fiery lava uh, height field. Okay, let's move on to the next one.